So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they told about the things that had happened on the road, and how he was known to them. Luke chapter 24 verses 33 and 35. When the two disciples had reached Emmaus and were refreshing themselves at the evening meal, the mysterious stranger, who had so enchanted them on the road, took bread and broke it, made himself known to them, and then vanished out of their sight. They had urged him to abide with them because the day was coming to an end, but now, although it was much later, their love was a lamp to their feet, yea, wings also. They forgot the darkness, their weariness was all gone, and they immediately journeyed back more than seven miles to tell the joyous news of the risen Lord, who had appeared to them along the way. They reached the Christians in Jerusalem and were received by a burst of joyful news before they could tell their own tale. These early Christians were all on fire to speak of Christ's resurrection and to proclaim what they knew of the Lord. They made common property of their experiences. Let their example impress us deeply this evening. We too must bear our witness concerning Jesus. John's account of the sepulcher needed to be supplemented by Peter, and Mary could speak of something further still. Then combined, we have a full testimony from which nothing can be spared. Each of us has peculiar gifts and special manifestations, but the one object that God has in view is the perfecting of the whole body of Christ. We must, therefore, bring our spiritual possessions and lay them at the apostles' feet, and make distribution unto all of what God has given to us. Do not keep back any part of the precious truth, but speak what you know and testify to what you have seen. Do not allow the toil, darkness, or possible unbelief of your friends to weigh you down even for a moment. Rise up and march to the place of duty, and once there, tell what great things God has shown to your soul. Amen.